Hey, that's why we get along so well, because we were talking about this before we went live, but I am a boiler operator by trade. In Canada, they call them stationary engineers. Okay. So, um, and we were talking about it, but I, I didn't want to really fill you in because, you know, I didn't want to, I yeah. didn't want to destroy the spontaneity of our discussion. <laughs> exactly. You're exactly right. It's that big thing in the basement. That's really? what I used to run. So, I mean, um, if you ever seen a Freddy Krueger film, that was me, you know. And uh, so if you ever see a movie where the bad things always happen in the movies, that's where I worked for over 20 years. <laughs> always in the pipe chases. So um, the boiler produces yeah. steam. Okay. And it's used to um, heat buildings. It's used to uh, use, you know, the, use the sterilizers in hospitals. It's used to, um, you know, warm the paint in, uh, in, uh, in um, automotive plants. I even worked in a hospital where they used the steam to drive chillers to cool the hospital, which is bizarre. But it was an energy oh, yeah. They actually burned garbage to produce steam to drive chillers to cool the hospital because it was it was free fuel, really. But also the steam. We also had a um, a boiler that uh, was over six hundred pounds and it drove um, turbines, which produced electricity. Gotcha. And we we fed it back to the grid. But the reason I, I think in probably in some place in the states as well. But my license, my ticket was to operate these boilers because if one of those things were to blow up, it would take out a city block. Oh wow! I mean, really? Yeah, expanding steam it would kill a lot of people. So we have to, you have to have a license to be able to operate them. So that's what I did for over twenty years. I worked in the bowels of the hospitals, or the uh, my last job was for an automotive plant that we were just talking about earlier, for an automotive right. assembly plant. Okay. And um, I had heard about this apologetic. You know, I had I had a passion for defending my faith most of my life, all my life, and because I, I grew up in a Christian home. And then I, I discovered I was doing it wrong. I went to an evangelism conference from the church I was attending, and I disagreed with ninety five percent of what the guy said. And I said something's got to be doing done about this. And this is when I was working as a boiler operator for this uh, automotive assembly plant. And then I didn't quit my job right away that day, but I think it was like a day or two later. I went to see Ben Stein's movie Expelled, and that movie oh. is um. It's on uh, intelligent design. Now, I'm not a proponent of intelligent design. I'm a, I'm a creationist. But at the end of the movie, uh, Ben Stein, he gave his famous line from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Remember in that movie where he goes, Bueller, Bueller? Well, at the end of the movie. I think that's a little before my time. <laughs> oh, come on. You're, you're aging me now. No, I think most of the people out there will know. It's, it's, like, uh, it's been yeah. rated as like, the best comedy movie by many people. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen it since... Um... Oh man, I I haven't seen that movie in ages, but I think it came out when I was a kid. Yeah, well, let me yeah. tell. Yeah. But at the end of the movie, he says, "If we don't do something about this, who will? Anyone? Anyone? Right. And and then I think it was either the next day or the day after that, I went to my work and I handed in my resignation. They thought I was nuts because I was working at that place. I was making over a hundred grand a year, um, wow. scuba diving every year. And people think that I do this for the money. They have no idea. They have right. no idea, you know, like, I mean, this is not, if you want to make money, don't go into apologetics. You know? Right, exactly. So, uh, so, yeah, so then I um, I quit my job back. It would be 11 years ago this May, and I started uh, doing this full time. And I started actually just by going on to different um, atheist blogs. So what happened is I had my website out. It was now presuppositional. And um, people would, whenever somebody would put a link to my website on their blog, I would get a notification. So I would go to these blogs and, you know, they'd say that I was an idiot or something like that. So I would show up <laughs> and I start debating these people. And some of these debate went for thousands of posts. And that's where I really honed my skill of um, discussing, you know, apologetics with people. And um, through that, um, I was able to do a uh, the unbelievable radio show in uh, England with Justin Brierley. I saw that. Name, Paul Baird, and he had, he debated me. I've actually debated him three times, but that's basically where it all started. I think the first debate was back in 2010. And things kind of snowballed from there. And then 2013 is when we came up with How to Answer the Fool, which is available for free on YouTube. Yeah, great movie, guys. Um, you know, if you guys have any chance, um, if you guys have a chance, go ahead and check that out. How to Answer the Fool. Um, isn't that the, well, well what's the name of the YouTube channel? It's, it's, it's Answer Anyone? Called Answer Anyone. Yeah, I've only got two two films up on there right now. I have that one and also Debating Dillahunty, which is a documentary on the debate that I did with Matt Dillahunty. Gotcha. 